Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will be covering part two of the AGM-65. On screen are the topics we are going to cover. Due to this being a long form video, I will put timestamps in the description so you can come back to a specific area if needed. The Maverick is a rocket propelled air to ground missile or AGM for short. It gives the pilot launch and leave capabilities relying on automatic self guidance except for the AGM-65 L Laser Maverick. The Air Force has procured seven models over the years, the Electro Optical or EO, AGM 65A, B, H, and K. H and K are EO but use a charged coupled device or CCD, better suited for desert environments. And infrared, AGM 65D and G, which is better suited for inclement weather and night operations. And the laser AGM 65L. At this point, I will no longer mention the AGM 65A and B as they are no longer in service or in DCS, and I will not mention the AGM 65L as we do not have that on the F 16 in DCS. The AGM 65D and H use a 125 pound shape charged warhead optimized for use against armored vehicles, bunkers, boats, radar vans, and small hard targets. The AGM-65 G and K use a 300 pound kinetic energy penetrator blast fragmentation warhead that is effective against unusually shaped targets such as hangars, bridges, ships, and small tactical targets such as tanks and bunkers. The AGM-65 D and H can be carried on and launched from the Lao 88 or Lao 117. The AGM-65 G and K can only be carried on and launched from the Lao 117 due to missile weight constraints on the missile shear pin. The nose of the Maverick is the Guidance Control Section or GCS and contains the seeker and associated electronics and hardware to operate it. The center aft section contains the rocket motor and thermal battery. Let's talk about the different HUD symbology you will see based on the delivery mode you are using. Starting on the right side, you will see the MLE scale. At the top and bottom of the MLE, you will see two ticks representing the scale boundaries, which are fixed at 20 nautical miles. In the middle, you will see a dynamic staple representing the missile footprint, the top being R max or max missile range, and the bottom being R min, minimum missile range. To the left of the staple is the target range cue for the aircraft's horizontal range to the target. And finally, to the left of that is the number indicating target, horizontal range, and nautical miles. The MLE will be the same for all modes. With the AGM-65 in bore mode, you will see bore in the lower left corner of the HUD. This is a pre-planned delivery mode, and the 65 is slaved to its bore line of sight. This is the TD box, representing the targeting pod's line of sight. You will also see the 65's bore cross above the flight path marker, representing the missile line of sight. Here I moved it to make it easier to see. In the lower right corner you will see the time to stair point. Below that and to the left is the bearing to the target. This represents degrees either left or right that you need to turn in order to have the target off your nose. To the right of that is the distance to the target. If you are 10 nautical miles or further you will have your slant range. It is important to note that if you have the HUD as the sensor of interest or soy, you can move the TD box around with the RDR cursor, which will change the distance and time in the lower right corner. With one target locked, you will see the bore cross on your HUD. With two targets locked, the first target will have the bore cross over it, while the second target will have a line of sight circle with a two. Pressing missile step will swap the bore cross and line of sight circle. Bore mode is useful for targets of opportunity as it does not mess with other sensors positions like the targeting pod and FCR for example. Pre is a pre-planned delivery mode and the 65 is slaved to the system point of interest or speed. TD box will be located at the currently selected steer point and the information in the lower right corner will be the same. Here you will see a circle with a box underneath it. The circle represents the 65's line of sight and the box underneath it indicates that the target is in range of the missile. Azimuth and range are taken into account. This box or keyhole will only show if you have a targeting pod equipped. Now you see two circles. The circle on the right has a one next to it along with the keyhole indicating it is the next to launch. The circle on the left has a two and no keyhole making it the second to launch. Pressing missile step will switch which 65 is next to launch. Lastly is Viz mode pre-designation. Viz mode is a visual delivery mode and the 65 is slaved to the TD box. 
This shows on the bottom left, and the TV box when the HUD is toy now represents the missile line of sight and is caged to the flight path marker. As long as you keep the HUD soy, you can move the TD box. Here you can see the TD box and the diamond represents the currently selected steer point. The information on the bottom right is the distance on the left with the right number being the steer point. It can be read as 6 nautical miles to steer point 1. TMS up once will stabilize the TD box. A second depress of TMS up will bring the soy to the weapon page, allowing you to refine your slew onto the target and change the field of view. TMS up a third time while over a target will put the 65 into track mode, and you will then see a 65 line of sight circle, and you will also see a keyhole as long as you are within parameters. Sticking with Viz mode, we will move to the Jehemix symbology real quick. The left bottom shows Viz, and the bottom right shows distance to stair point. Depressing TMS forward long moves the TD box to the Jehemix aiming cross, allowing you to acquire targets by moving your head. The Seeker will follow your head movements. A second press with TMS forward will ground stabilize the Seeker, allowing you to slew. Here, the Seeker is ground stabilized, but the TD box is out of view, indicated by the X in the box. The diamond above that is the currently selected steer point, also out of view of the Jehemix and has an X. Once you ground stabilize, the lower right corner should read bearing and range to the target. Here, the TD box and 65's line of sight with the keyhole is in view. I exclude the seeker in order for you to see the line of sight with the keyhole. Entering bore mode puts the FCR into GM mode. Bore is indicated on the SMS page. Pressing inventory takes you to the inventory page. Control takes you to the control page to set up auto power on. Pressing OSB 6 adjacent to 2AG65D will change your air-to-ground weapons if you have anything other than 65s. The 2 indicates that you have 2 of the current weapon, and the AG65D tells you that it is an AGM65D. OSB 7 is the power on and power off option. RP is the release pulse option, 1 indicating that 1 release pulse will be sent when you press the weapon release button. Selecting Pre also brings up the FCR in GM mode, and Pre is now showing on the SMS page. Entering Viz mode puts the FCR into air-to-ground ranging or AGR mode. Viz is now showing on the SMS page. Pressing OSB 5 takes you into the control page for the 65. This allows you to set up when the AGM 65 auto powers on. By default, it is off. OSB 20 allows you to select north, east, south, or west of a given stair point. OSB 19 allows you to select the desired steer point. Next is the release pulse page. Here you can enter the number of release pulses that get sent when depressing the weapon release button. Setting it to 2 will send 2 release pulses through the various systems associated with weapon release, which will then send one pulse to one station and the other pulse to the other station. So if you have two targets locked with, the, with two separate AGM 65s, one on station 3 and one on station 7 for instance, one depress of the weapon release button will send two pulses and release both 65s in quick succession. You will see the screen before weapon power on and after all 65s are released. Once you start the power on process, you will see standby in the upper left corner below OSB 1 and not timed out will show in the center of the display. It takes three minutes for the AGM 65 to warm up. This is the weapon page when you have an AGM 65 selected and fully powered. Under OSB 1, you have the letters OPER for operate. If there is a ready at the bottom, then the weapon will be released when you depress the weapon release. OSB 2 can be used to change between the different operating modes for the missile. OSB 3 can be used to change between narrow and wide field of views. OSB 6 is the same as the SMS page. OSB 7 can be used to change the polarity of the missile depending on the type of 65 you are using. For the AGM-65D, your options are cold on hot and hot on cold. For the AGM-65G, you have cold on hot, hot on cold, and area, or force correlate. And for the AGM-65H and K, you have black on white, white on black, and area. If you are tracking a target with that 65 and you select a different polarity, the new polarity will not go into effect until you break lock. These are the vertical and horizontal crosshairs. The gap in the middle of the crosshair is the tracking window and defines the boundaries of the target based on IR and EO contrast. And these are the narrow field of view markers. This is the pointing cross or weapon reference symbol and represents the displacement of the seeker from the longitudinal axis of the missile. 
the pointing cross is blanked any time it is moving in the middle of the crosshairs in order to not interfere with target identification. These three lines are the secret depression angle markers and represent 5, 10, and 15 degrees. In bore mode, the larger crosshairs represent the aircraft bore sight, and the smaller crosshairs are the weapon reference symbol. When you start tracking a target, the larger crosshairs will collapse around the target. Depending on the size of the target will determine the size of the crosshairs. Here you can see that bore sight next to OSB-20 is inverted indicating that the missile is doing a bore sight. The controls we will be using are on screen and are strongly suggested to be bound in order to make things easier. Take your time and pause the video if needed. All right, we're here in the jet. Uh, I'm going to start from a cold jet since a hot start and an air start for Mavericks are already bore sighted. So this will essentially be for if you're new. So give me a few. I'm going to jump forward and we'll get started. All right, so we're here in the jet now. Started up from a cold start. Uh, first thing you want to do, obviously, is go to your air to ground mode. Your little, uh, I, I have my screen set up the way I want them. So on my left, I have my FCR and weapon since I'm using Mavericks. And then on my right side, I have my SMS, HSD, and targeting pod. Uh, you could use Viz or Pre, just do Pre because that's what everyone's gonna, that's what you're normally gonna be using. That's what a lot of people use. Uh, I'll go over the other modes when we're in the air, but we'll just do Pre for now. First thing you're gonna wanna do is turn your power on, doing uh, OSB 7. Uh, once you hit that, it's gonna start a three minute timer internally. After that three minutes, you should have a video on your weapon page and your Maverick should be good to go and ready to get more sighted. What I like to do is go to my time page and where it says hack, I make sure the asterisks are over it and I just rock her up to start the time. And that'll kind of give me a good gauge of uh, where I'm at. I normally do that a lot quicker, but obviously through the talking process of this, I'll just go ahead and speed this up real quick. All right, so our weapons are on now, so our 65s are turned on. As you can tell, we got video on the weapon page now. Uh, from here, it's pretty much just bore sighting. So you just go to your targeting pod, set it up how you like, whether you want auto on, manual for the handoff. I like to do manual gain personally, and either white hot, black hot, depending, or TV. And you can also adjust your uh, contrast and everything if you want it to. I like to just because I like a good clean image. So I'm just going to go to Snowplow. 65 is going to follow that. And I'm going to make my targeting pot soy. TMS up to uh, control your targeting pod once you're in Snowplow. I'm going to start just like that. All right, so our target's over there. I'm gonna see where our line of sight circle is. Okay, so just slightly off, that's fine. Uh, be careful doing your bore sights close like this. We're about two, two miles from the target there, from that uh, vehicle, as you can tell. It's two, 1.5, so. Be mindful how close you're doing it. The closer you are, the more parallax error you're going to have. I'll kind of post a little screenshot or something to kind of show the effects of that. So, pretty easy to bore sight on the ground. TMS up. Woo! Look at that. So, if you have this happening, this has been happening a lot. This is just the targeting pod trying to find contrast. So, if you zoom in, it, it'll stabilize after a while. So, I'm just going to get my video good here. There we go. It's good. So, move your weapon over the same area. Field of view. Lock. If it shifts a little bit, that's fine. So that's pretty much spot on. Once you get it, so TMS up, obviously, to lock the target. Once you have it locked and you have crosshairs vibrating like that, you should be good to go. 
make sure from here, make sure you have your ground jet on and you're in either Master Arm or Sin. I just do Sin if I'm on the ground. Be careful if you have ground jet enabled. Don't hit your EJ button because if you do, you will jettison not only your stations 3 and 7 stores for air to ground, but you'll also jettison your tanks, which I'm sure you don't want to do and have to do all that fun stuff. So, once you got all that set up, right? Ground jet on, Sam, you got your target locked. Go ahead and press foresight. Once it foresights, you should be good. All right. Don't expect this to be perfect from this distance. Um, because it's, it's just not. Okay. If you watched part one, you'll understand why. But do know that uh, your video is still going to be lined up with each other. Okay. Like I said. Parallax error. It's going to mess with things, okay? So you can see this is over the target. So. And then you'll do the same thing for Station 7. Me personally, when once I'm done for sighting, uh, I will go ahead and go back to my SMS page and power my weapon off. So, real life, the pilots have operating limits, and that's that operating time limit includes the warm-up time, so that three minutes. Um, so once you turn it on and you get it foresighted, just go ahead and turn it off. That'll also prevent future problems, uh, like your line of sight being off uh, due to vibrations and everything from taking off and flying, pulling Gs. All that will actually mess with the, uh, the seeker. So be mindful of that. Just turn it off. If you power cycle, so I've had it off now. Uh, if I power it on and I actually hit my uncage button, right? That's on the throttle. It should turn the video on. Okay, make your web page soy, press it, and it'll turn on. Okay. Same thing with station seven. So if I press it right now, it's not going to turn on. Make your web page soy, press it, and it'll turn on. Okay. Then I can step. And all that, okay. And I just, I'll just power it off for now. So, just a little cool thing. I'm actually shocked that they put that in. But you know, you do have that ability. So if you're in the air, you're flying around, you can turn it off and quickly turn it back on. So from here, I'm gonna hop in the air and do air to ground bore sight and air to air bore sight. All right, we're going to jet now. We're going to go ahead and start with Viz, so make sure you go to air to ground. You'll see your Maverick go to the flight path marker, which is what we want. Now, if you see on the Maverick screen, we have the target, our AI friendly there. He's going to be uh, in some clouds there. So you want to maximize your contrast, and uh, let's see what his range is from us real quick here. Just go into the dark light. Block. So he's 2.8, that's fine. Back to air ground here. So that's a good distance to be. I'm not going to zoom in with my... I'm not going to go into narrow field of view with the Maverick. I'm just going to keep it in wide field of view uh, in order to maximize the uh, image with the targeting pod. Okay. That's so why I want to get stay at about 3 miles here. Because on my targeting pod, I'm going to go into narrow uh, field of view to ensure I get him. So that should be good to go. Should have a good contrast there. Yep. All right. So now he's a white little dot with a black background. That's perfect. Let me go ahead and put autopilot on. All right. So we can do this one of two ways. Uh, well, not one of two ways really, but you can slew it with your HUD, right? And find the target. And then if I TMS up with my HUD, I would stabilize this, right? So if I maneuver, this is going to move with me. If I TMS up, it would just stay locked to the ground. So it would ground stabilize and I can maneuver and it would stay there. But I don't want to do that right now. I just want to uh, find him, get him good there. And then I'm going to go DMS down, DMS down again, make my targeting bot soy, narrow field of view. I'm going to refine this here. And then this is going to be pretty quick, okay? See on our HUD here, 
says L next to Sim. I'm just going to fire my laser here to see how close we are. All right, so we're 4.3 from him right now. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to team us up. Team us up again. It's going to lock, and I'm going to bore. Okay? Now I'm going to team us down. Team us down again with my targeting pod. Team us down. Team us down again. And then, very important, go to your HUD as soy. Okay? So that way your targeting pod uh, cages to the flight path marker. Okay? Just what you want. Right? Because we're in biz. Okay? So now I can maneuver and that's foresighted. Right? Real quick, what I want to show is if you are foresighting in the air, okay? And you are having this issue where you have your HUD soy and you for some reason are hitting TMS down, you're going to notice your MAV uh, web page is trying to go back to the target area. Easy fix for that is to DMS down, DMS down, go to your tar targeting pod, move your targeting pod a little bit. Your Maverick will go back to the targeting pod and then TMS down with your targeting pod of soy, TMS down again, and then make your HUD soy. Okay. That will make it go back to the flight path marker. So now, wherever you look with your flight path marker, it will be there with your. Uh, with your targeting pod, okay? And your Maverick will be, everything will be lined up essentially the way you, uh, to where you want it, okay? So yeah, that's just a little quick fix if you're having that issue, put your TMS down and it's trying to go back like that, just TMS down, move your targeting pod, okay? And then make your HUD sweat. And it'll uh, cage back to your flight path marker. Now we're going to talk about doing war sighting from the air to the ground, so from air to ground. Uh, so I'm just going to aim towards the target area over there. Uh, we're a little ways out, so we're going to do fizz, or uh, pre, I mean. So we already did fizz, so we're going to do pre. And I could either use my weapon page and hit OSB2, where it says viz, to select the appropriate mode that I want. I could do it from the SMS page. Or I could do it using my throttle RDR cursor enable switch. Okay, that's bore. That's pre. You're ever you're only ever really gonna bore sight in fizz and pre. You're never really gonna do it in bore because bore just goes to a preset. Now you can bore sight this to have it be below the flight path marker if you want it to. So just gonna get the area, get my target, zoom in here. Two on wide. Okay. Target. I'm gonna wait till the crosshairs uh, collapse before I bore sight. It should collapse here. There we go. And bore sight. Team us down. Team us down. There we go. And everything is all good. And that's bore sighted. So, it's just like locking up a target, you just TMS up on the targeting pod, it'll transfer over to your weapon page, TMS up to make the target sort, uh, locked with the Maverick, and then from there you, uh, yeah, hit Foresight, and it Foresights, and then TMS down, or you could fire it if you wanted to, I don't know why you would Foresight and then fire, but, you know, if you got the target locked, you got it locked, it'll, it'll track the target. We're going into the employment. The employment for the missile is going to be the same whether you're in fizz, bore, or free. Uh, so we'll just do free for now. Uh, and I'll talk about like what you're looking for and uh, my recommendations in terms of employing the missile. Uh, want to be anywhere between at least 15 to 20, in my opinion. You could push it down to at least maybe as low as like 10,000 if you wanted to. Uh, depending on cloud cover, but obviously our cloud cover is looking pretty good, so I'm just going to stay at about 16 here. I'll turn back towards the target, make sure we're in arm. going to make my targeting pod soy, clear any cursor uh, steering errors by cursor zeroing, or just pressing TMS down on the stick. I'm just going to turn in here, and uh, things you're looking for, 
obviously uh, show you kind of all that stuff. But you want your pointing cross to be in what we talked about earlier, the keyhole, okay? Because if it's not in that keyhole, you could have a potential uh, break of lock, meaning your Maverick could end up breaking lock after you are maneuvering and stuff and you have a target lock. And I'll show you that here. So for engaging, we'll go into narrow field view, get the best possible lock, get the target in the tracking window. All right, there we go. So this is ideally what you're looking for. Okay, we got the pointing cross across here. We have station three locked, so you could put that pointing cross on the left side here. All right, make sure the Maverick doesn't cross in front of your nose. Uh, but I'll show you what it looks like if you're out of side that keyhole and that pointing cross will start flashing like that. Okay, that means if I was to fire this weapon, it could potentially break lock. Meaning, uh, yeah, bad things happen, it's not going to want to track that target. So we'll just climb back up here. So at that point, with the pointing cross in the keyhole, I could have fired. Uh, but I'm going to show you another way of doing this uh, with both missiles. So that's one way you could just lock the target up, press weapon release, and off one missile goes. But if you want to fire off both missiles that you have, go to your weapon page, uh, SMS page, go to RP for release pulses, and go and go press two. Hit enter, now you have two selected, okay? Meaning, if I have one target locked, and I press it, two pulses will get released, but because the Maverick's not locked, it shouldn't fire, okay? It'll only fire if you have an actual good track with the target on both, okay? At least one will fire, but the other one won't, is what I'm saying. And I, I tend to be pretty fast in my, uh, my run-ins here. Not too fast. I'll go into idle as I'm going towards the target here. And I'm pointing down at him. So, go back here. Find our target here. Get that. Missile step to the next missile. Uh, find our next target right here. Now when I press it, you see on the, see on the HUD, I talked about earlier, you get the 1 and the 2. Meaning station seven right now is going to be the first to go, and then station three. We got the box under the circle, the line of sight circle, indicating that we have uh, we're within limits. We got the keyhole. See how the weapon page our pointing cross is in the keyhole still, so we're good to fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpause and press my weapon release, and one off, two off. There we go. Once those are off, go ahead and do your. Uh, Awesome. Safe escape maneuvers that you need to do in order to not get shot out of the sky. Let's see the two explosions out there. Perfect. Alright, so when you're in biz and you want to use your Jehemix, uh, I recommend setting your Jehemix up by going and list zero and pressing uh, recall to go to the Hemix display once you do me personally i recommend doing hud and cockpit so that way you could still aim if you have to target it out in front of you if you're using viz okay you don't have to have the hud option available uh, or turned on uh, just so you know if you don't want to do that but me personally i'm gonna do it so I'm going to use the one off Station 7 since the target is off my right side here. Uh, in order to go into the Jehemix with the 65, just TMS up long. It'll slave it to your Jehemix. And everywhere you move your head, the Maverick will follow that. Okay, just know there is a slight delay in the way it moves just because it's, it's on a gimbal. So it's only going to move so fast. But other than that, just like uh, regular viz, you just find the target you want to destroy. You can see we got the speed right there, indicated by the diamond. We're just going to get the Jehemix in the uh, general area. And now I'm going to use my Maverick screen and a mix of my targeting pot as well. And we can uh, 
just stabilize it in the area. TMS up again to make the soy go to the Maverick page. I'm going to zoom in, refine it just a little more, TMS up again, and I'm going to make sure I get my pointing cross inside that keyhole area on the weapon page, and release. Alright, so going into bore mode, what you're going to do is obviously make sure you're in bore. Uh, you'll see bore on the bottom left there. And uh, pretty simple, you just use the cross on your HUD as the uh, the, the aiming reticle essentially. All right? Again, if you make sure your HUD is soy, uh, because if that, you know, if you want to use your targeting pod, That'll allow you to kind of move your uh, target box down there to a target that you want. Okay. Uh, so say that's the target you want to engage. Just fly the aircraft to the target. Get them in sight of the reticle. Make sure your uh, weapon page is soy. Altitude. Lock up the target, and you can fire. Okay. Obviously, we can't because we don't have the keyhole, and we're way too close. But that's pretty much what you would do if you were using bore. There's nothing real, real fancy about it. Uh, if your weapon page is soy, you could move the cross around and everything. Uh, me personally, I kind of like to have it just below the flight path marker. Uh, that'll help you at the end of the day uh, make sure you're flying over the target and not to the target. Okay? Because you never want to fly towards a target. You want to fly over the target if you can help it. So, say you got it below the flight path marker there. There's my Altitude. target right there. Altitude. This mode is definitely... Uh, more fast pace. Fire. You should hit no problem. It's faster pace and also uh, Caution. Caution. a little bit more dangerous. Because you'll probably be using this one for target opportunity type kills. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. I'll be putting more videos out here hopefully soon, regarding other weapon systems for the F-16. If you didn't like the video, leave a dislike, leave a comment in the section, in the comment section, uh, telling me what you didn't like, or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section as well, and I will answer them. Thanks for watching, have a good one.